would you look at that? That's one handsome young man right there. What? Oh. <laughs> hey, do you know who this is a picture of? It's me. Really, it is. Well, I mean, it used to be me. It's me when I was a little bit younger. Well, okay, it's me when I was a lot younger. Well, <laughs> as we grow older, we grow and change. We all do. I mean, look at you. Not too long ago, you were sucking your little thumbs and uh, getting your baby diapers changed. <coughs> well, I guess we all were. But now look at you. What a difference. And as time goes by, you'll keep looking different. Older, more grown up. And if you're lucky, you'll be just as cute. Living things like people, animals, and plants grow and change, but we don't usually see it happening. My dog Chevy here used to be a lot smaller when she was just a puppy. Well, now she's fully grown, but I never really saw the growing part happen. Aww. It takes time for these natural changes to happen. That's why sometimes when we haven't seen people we know for a long time, they pinch our cheeks and tell us how much we've grown. Stop that. <laughs> Have you ever seen a kitten before? Over time, that kitten will grow into a full-size cat. These calves are baby cows. Over time, the calves will get bigger until they're full size. A baby elephant is also called a calf. And in time, this calf will grow much, much bigger. Even plants grow. They start out as small seedlings and over time grow into large plants. In order to grow, people, animals, and plants all have to get the stuff they need to live and stay healthy. Part of that means eating the right kinds of foods that keep us healthy and help us to grow. Oh, what a cutie. Ooh, yeah. If you want your body to get all the things it needs to grow, it's important to eat healthy stuff. Snack foods like chips and cookies can taste really good, but your body needs a lot more of this kind of stuff. Fruits and vegetables. These all have good things for you built right up inside and they taste pretty yummy too. So make sure you eat some healthy things every day that'll help your body to grow up big and strong. Did you ever notice how other kids look like their parents? I'll bet you look a lot like your parents in lots of different ways. Maybe people have told you that you have your father's eyes or your mother's smile. Well, that's because the way you look depends on what your parents look like. And your grandparents, and your great-grandparents, and your great-great-grandparents, and well, you get the idea. That's why often people think you look like your grandparents too. You're not the same as all those people. You are your own person. But the fact is, people tend to look a great deal like a combination of all the folks in their family who came before them. Oh, not again. These are my offspring. That's just a fancy way of saying they're my kids. Some people think they look more like me, and some people think they look more like their mom. Truth is, they're really a pretty even combination of the two of us. It kind of depends on who they're next to when you see them. Well, people aren't the only ones who resemble their parents. Most living things have offspring that look like their parents in one way or another. Baby zebras have stripes, just like their parents. Young giraffes have long necks and spots like their parents. Elephants have big ears and trunks, and so do their babies. Lion cubs are furry like their parents. All kinds of living things that live on land and even in the water look like their parents. It's not just people and animals that look like their parents. So do plants and other kinds of living things. A young plant like this one will grow much bigger until it becomes a 
full-size adult plant. And when it does, it will look like its parent plants. But it won't look anything like them if it doesn't survive. That's why different kinds of living things look different from one another. Well, this plant and I don't look alike. And each living thing has special structures, or in other words, parts that help it to survive depending on where it lives. All living things do, even you. Your structures help you to move and get around and make sense of the world around you. From Marvelous Comics and Imagine Entertainment comes the story of five fantastic heroes from another world with most extraordinary senses. The visionary, whose keen sense of sight remains focused on justice. Volume, with hearing sensitive enough to detect a pin drop on the other side of the planet. Buds, whose sense of taste can sweeten the bitterness of evil. Perfumite, with the sweet smell of victory surrounding her nemesis. And Digits, whose incredible sense of touch can detect the footsteps of an ant through a wall. These five stand alone against Dr. Dull Ness and the forces of Forrest Dunn. It's the Fantastic Five. Coming soon to a theater near you. Check your local theater for showtimes. Do you hear that? You have to be really quiet. I don't hear anything either. But that's what we use our ears for, hearing. Our bodies have ways of getting information from the world around us, and hearing is one way we figure out what's going on. When we use different parts of our bodies to gather information, we're using our senses. Our senses are really great at telling us about what's happening all around us. And they help to keep us safe from danger. Well, for instance, say I was playing catch with my friends and our ball goes over a neighbor's fence. Well, before I decide to climb that fence and get the ball, if I hear this, well, I'm probably not going to climb that fence and have to deal with the mean dog on the other side. Well, in all honesty, climbing the fence isn't such a great idea anyway. I could get hurt that way, and so could you. Um, I, I guess I better go talk to my neighbor. Another one of our senses is our sense of sight. We use our eyes to see things and to help us to figure out what's happening around us and respond to it. Our sense of sight can also keep us safe from danger because we can watch out for dangerous things before we get hurt. <sighs> Whew. Am I hot? And stinky. Ooh. Well, that brings us to another one of our senses, our sense of smell. We use our noses to sniff the air and get information about what kinds of things are going on around us. Smell can even tell us all kinds of things, like, ooh, if something has gone bad, like this milk, yuck. Ooh. Your sense of smell can keep you safe that way, keep you from getting sick from bad food. It can even tell you when there's a fire somewhere because usually we can smell smoke before we even see a fire. Now we get to my favorite sense, the sense of taste. I'm sure you have some favorite kinds of foods like me. Maybe you like pizza, or cookies, or chocolate milk. Mmm. Well, whatever you like, your sense of taste sure does tell you something about the stuff you eat. It can tell you if something is sour, like a lemon, or salty, like a pretzel, or sweet like a cookie, or bitter, kind of like a walnut. And your sense of taste, like your sense of smell, can keep you safe by helping you to know if food has gone bad and you shouldn't eat it. Mmm, not bad. Last but not least is your sense of touch. The whole outside of your body can tell you about the world around you when you touch something. Try touching the floor right now. How does it feel? Probably kind of cool, huh? Well, touch tells us all kinds of things. Touch can tell you if something is hard or soft. 
smooth or rough, hot or cold. Because of all these things, touch also gives us information and helps to keep us safe, just like our other senses. You see, our bodies are built with structures like ears and eyes, a nose, a tongue, and skin that sense things going on in the world. Our senses. Structures, like the ones in your body, can be used to help us tell different kinds of living things apart. When we put living things into groups based on the kinds of structures they have, we say we classify them. That way we can tell one kind of living thing from another. For example, there are five main kinds of animals that have bones inside their bodies. But there are differences between them. Birds are animals that have bones but they're different from other animals because they also have feathers. Reptiles are animals like snakes that have scales covering their bodies. Fish have scales too, but they have special structures that allow them to survive under the water. Amphibians like frogs don't have scales on their bodies, just skin, but they're able to live part of their life underwater and part of it on land. Then there are mammals. Mammals are animals that have fur or hair on the outside of their bodies. The structures on all those kinds of animals, just like our structures, help them to survive and stay safe. It even makes some of them kind of cuddly and cute. Living things grow and change. People come in all different shapes and sizes. But we all start out smaller than we end up. That's because people grow and change. But people aren't alone. All kinds of living things grow and change. The offspring of living things usually look a lot like their parents. They have similar kinds of structures. You have structures that help you learn about the world around you. You have ears for hearing, eyes for seeing, a nose for smelling, a tongue for tasting, and skin that can feel things. When you use your structures to learn about the world, you're using your senses. Structures can also help you tell different kinds of living things apart. By looking at structures, you could tell if something is a plant or an animal. And you can even tell what kind of animal something is, like a penguin. Living things can have a lot in common, but also have things that make them different. How are you like other living things? How are you different? Living things are all growing and changing. We all start out kind of small and change as we get bigger and bigger. So what do you think we're going to look like as we get older? I guess only time will tell for you and me. Science and me. Thank you.